Well, it's class time again. Song of Solomon, chapter number six. Uh, in fact, we're nearing the end of chapter six. Class, listen to me uh, very well now. The two verses that we're going to discuss tonight, verses 11 and 12, are difficult. Those that have spent their lives studying the Old Testament scriptures tell me that they are, especially verse 12, some of the toughest to understand verses in all of the Word of God. And uh, I'm going to approach these verses, that's going to sound unusual, from two different angles. Now, what I'm saying is preliminary, but it is important to our text tonight. I probably have 15 study Bibles, Bibles with notes, maybe 20. And among those Bibles, the interpretation is about half and half as to this, this issue. Is he speaking? In verses 11 and 12, by that I mean Solomon, a picture of our bridegroom, the Lord Jesus, or is she speaking? And by that I mean the Shulamite girl, the bride, a picture of the church. I spent a couple of hours studying it from the viewpoint that she is talking, and then this morning, continuing to study Somebody said, I probably overstudied these lessons. But see, I, I enjoy learning the Word of God. I, I, became, I became aware of the approach that it could be Him speaking. Now listen to me. Either way is beautiful. I, I'm going to say something. This may be important. Somebody might learn something, get a blessing out of this. We are not talking about salvation verses. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. There's no doubt. There's no doubt about that verse. Or, or, uh, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Clear cut. Clear as crystal. Brother Bagel, I worry when you say we don't know exactly which approach. These verses do not deal with salvation. These verses deal with fellowship, Intimacy, communion, us with our Savior. And whether he's talking or she's talking, listen to me, class, the end result is the same. Precious communion with our Lord. Uh, I tell you what I really need to do. I need to show you the text. I need to show you the verses. And... Uh, it's not a sunny day, so this ought to work better. There is the text. Now, I'm not going to hold it there long because I want you, I want to treat, teach you, train you to have your Bibles open. But look at verse 11. I went down into the garden of nuts. Wow. I went down to see the fruits of the valley, not the fruits on the hillside of the plain, of the valley, to see whether the vine flourished and whether the pomegranate budded. And then verse 12, it is tough. Or ever I was aware, my soul made me like the chariots of Amenadab. Or ever I was aware, my soul made me like the chariots of Amenadab. Wow. Preacher, do you think we can decipher? Do you think we can discern these truths? I sure do. The Holy Spirit of God who wrote these verses lives in my heart. Class, he lives in your heart. And he can expound. He can explain. In fact, can I confess something to you? As I read it to you this very time, 
I mean a few seconds ago, it seemed like the Lord gave me clarity and vision and peace in the way I want to emphasize these verses. There's a little prayer in Psalm 119 I love when I'm studying the Bible. Open thou mine eyes, Lord, that I may see wondrous things out of thy word, out of thy law. And the word wondrous there in Hebrew spelled P-A-L-A means uh, marvelous, but it also means hard things. This is a hard text. But he can open our eyes. Now, for the plethora, for the host of commentators that say, this is the bride. This is the bride going down into her garden. This is the bride. Look, look, look. from the standpoint of the bride, I went down into the garden of nuts. Heretofore, she has invited him to the garden. Now she goes to the garden. Uh, he's not here. I need to add an adverb. He's not here yet. Uh, reminds me of that old song, I, I, I go to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and what's the goal? And the voice I hear, oh my, coming air so near is the voice of my Beloved, and he walks with me and talks with me. That's the goal here. I went down into the garden of nuts. Now, that's an unusual expression, the garden of nuts. Probably the word garden there is a grove of trees. And likely, and I'm basing this on something the historian uh, Josephus wrote, likely uh, these are walnuts. She has gone down into a garden into a grove of beautiful walnut trees. She's gone to see the fruits of the valley. The fruits of the valley. She's interested in whether there is fruit being born. Get this. To please her bridegroom. To please her, her with us, our Savior. Oh my, I, I, I don't have time, but I'd love to stop and preach that. We ought to live our lives interested in fruit, our bearing fruit, our encouraging our Christian brothers and sisters to bear fruit, to please our Lord. All kinds of fruit. I think the nuts, the walnuts, and then later in verse 11, the vine, the grapevines, and then the pomegranates budding, I think they represent all the fruits, all the luscious flavors and fragrances of the garden. It wasn't long ago she had gotten cold, indifferent, and lazy toward her bridegroom. And then he told her how beautiful she was. And then he told her how lovely she was, our last lesson. And, and, uh, and, and, and now she says, I... I I am going to respond. I'm going to go and see how the fruit trees are going. And while she's there, please listen to me. While she is there in the garden where the vines and the pomegranates are flourishing and budding, verse 12, or ever I was aware. Listen to that. Or ever I was aware. Uh, aware, it is the Hebrew verb Y-A-D-A, yada. This is what it meant. Before I knew it. Or ever I was aware. It hit me from nowhere. Uh, it's breezy today and it's going to be raining any minute. Sitting out on the side porch having class. You'll hear, <laughs> uh, I didn't plan for the wind chimes, but here we go. And they sound lovely to me. I think that's the noise, she, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the sound, the harmony she hears in her soul. Ever I was aware, my soul made me like the chariots of Amenadab. I think she realizes 
it hits her as she's inspecting the fruit. And she wants to be a fruit bearer. She wants to be a fruit tree. She wants to be a garden for his honor and his glory. She said, I, I, it just came out of nowhere. There was a chariot, the chariot of Amenadab. And uh, the idea of the chariot there, uh, it is something on which to ride. And, uh, and uh, it says the chariots of Amenadab, please follow me, that's plural. It is a whole host, a whole convoy of chariots of Amenadab. Let's talk about Amenadab a minute. Uh, some commentators think it's the name of a person, a proper name. And if it is, we don't know who he is. And he's not mentioned elsewhere in uh, the Song of Solomon. But I think it's a blending of Hebrew words. Let me, let me break it down. Ami. A-M-M-I. A-M is the noun. Uh, the ending, M-I, it means people. It means my people. My people. That's a term the Lord loves to use for those who've been saved. I will be their God and they will be my people. So there's something here. She's gone down to the garden. She's inspecting fruit. She's delighted at, at, at the, uh, the fact there's some budding going on and there's some fruit going on. That psh, all of a sudden, unexpectedly, wherever I was, my soul made me like the chariots of a bunch of Christians, a bunch of believers, the house of God, like a bunch of local churches, a men, Nadib, and in Hebrew, it's N-A-D-I-Y-B, Nabid, and it means a crowd of people who are willing, a crowd of people who are gracious, a crowd of people who are generous. Here's what I think it says. When we look at it from the standpoint of the bride, I'm not going to run from him. I'm not going to refuse to answer the door. I, 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 I'm not going to be cold and indifferent anymore. I'm going to the garden. That's where his interest is. And, and I'll be there. And, and Oh my, look, the pomegranates are budding. And, and it's springtime, or at least autumn time, and the late crops are coming in. And, and, uh, and, and the grapes are flourishing. And my, look at this crop of walnuts this year. And he loves walnuts. And, and, uh, and all of a sudden, before I knew it, She's with them. another throng and another group and another house of God and another church and, 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 uh, and they're singing praises and they're glorifying God and they're, oh, oh, taste and see the Lord is good. Amen, amen. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Oh, he's drawn us. He's, draw, he's nearby. I sense him and uh, 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 draw me and we, uh, all of God's people, will run after thee. She goes there alone, but she meets up with some other believers. My people, Amy, my people. And they, they together magnify. Isn't it going to be something when we all get to heaven and sing and shout the victory and gather around our Lord and magnify His glorious name? A glimpse of what it could be if the text talks about the bride being the eye in verse Number 11 and verse number 12. And honestly, my heart is warmed up thinking of that view, of that approach. Oh my, I'm glad I might go to worship alone. I might need some time in my prayer closet. But all oh, glory to God, Christianity is not a lone ranger thing. Christianity is when we all get together. Uh, it's uh, the church, the very idea of church, a called out, a gathered assembly of God's people. Hallelujah. Her. No wonder half the commentaries are about that half say it's her. It's her. Now, as it were, turn the page. Because I'm going to use the rest of the class to describe the possibility that it could be him. It could be the king. It could be Solomon himself. Let's read it again. I went down into the garden of nuts. We're letting I be Solomon, who in this book is a type of Jesus. 
Can anybody, listen to me, somebody please give me an amen here. Can anybody think of a time when Jesus went down? When he went down. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That is condescension. Can anybody think of, hey, hey, Philippians chapter 2. Jesus was in the form of God. Thought it not robbery. Nothing wrong with being equal with God. Yet he made himself of no reputation. He went down. Took upon himself the form of a man. And yea, more than that, the form of a slave, a servant. Became obedient unto death, the death of the cross. I went down. I went down. Boy, I'm glad he came down one day. I'd gone to hell if he hadn't come down that day. Died on the cross. I went down into the garden. The garden. Oh, Listen to me, class member. You're part of the garden. But the Bible, you're part of the garden. No, we want to be fragrant. We want to be clean. We want to be pure. We want to be free. He went down into the garden of nuts. The garden of nuts. Now listen to me. Nuts. That's an unusual term in my nuts. Preacher, what, what comes to mind about nuts? Well, they can be delicious. They can be very healthy. Uh, a snack, nuts, but they're hard on the outer surface. Walnuts, hard to break open. And, and, and other nuts, but we're, we're probably dealing with walnuts here. I think that's talking about, please listen to me, class, the hard times of life. I think that might be talking about the times when the Lord has to take me up to the woodshed and give me a whipping, chasing me. Rebuke me. Tell me where I've been wrong. Oh, that's a hard time. You say, preacher, that doesn't fit the bride. Oh, yes, it does. He came by. She wouldn't answer the door. Honey, I'm in bed. You didn't have, uh, you're coming by unannounced. And it's late at night. And, and he withdrew. He left. And she goes out into the night. And the watchman wound her. Uh, uh, the watchman bruised her. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and she's learning a lesson the hard way. I think this is Jesus going to his little bride and saying, let me see my garden of nuts. What lesson have you learned during the hard times? What lesson have you picked up when, when you're going through, when you're going through the difficult times? I've got a verse I'm just dying to read to you. It's in Psalm 119. It is good for me that I have been afflicted. It is good for me that I've taken a trip through the nut groves, hard times, that I might learn God's Word, that I might learn God's Word. That's Psalm 119, 71. Listen to this one. Coming down to the garden of nuts. We'll learn more in the woodshed than we will on the mountaintop at times. Before I was afflicted, Psalm 119, 67, before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now, now I'm keeping God's word. I have kept God's word. Learn something in the hard times represented by those walnut trees. Blessed is the man whom the Lord chastens and teaches out of his word. Let's go down the garden of nuts and see what is being learned there. See, it fits. Uh, and then the Lord said, I went down into my garden of nuts to see the fruits of the valley. Y'all hear that? To see the fruits of the valley. And I emphasized it when I read the text. Not the fruits up on the mountainside. Not the fruits on the fertile plain over yonder. The fruits of the valley. The valley the low times, the discouraging times, the, uh, the, the times when it seems like we can't find the Lord. Job said, I looked and I couldn't find him. But we know he's somewhere nearby, standing in the shadows, the old song says. Oh my, the, I want to see the fruits of the valley. Job, you've been in the valley. Did you learn anything? He sure did. Joseph, you spent years in the valley. Did you learn anything? He sure did. Paul, I sent you to Arabia for years. Did you in the valley? Did you learn anything out in the desert? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
And again, I wouldn't be surprised if we learned more there than anywhere else. The valley of chastening. Oh, listen to this. It's in 1 Corinthians 11, 32. I know the verse, but I didn't know the reference. Paul said, when we are judged, when the Lord gets a hold of us, when He puts us through the valley, when He sends us to the nut grove, uh, when we are judged, when we are chastened of the Lord, He does that that we should not be condemned with the world. I'd rather be uh, I'd rather be a child of God and take His whippings in the Father and me the Son than to be with the world and die and go to a devil's hell. That's what He's saying. Hebrews chapter twelve, talking about the fruits of the valley. Nobody that gets chastened says, "Oh, that was pleasurable." <laughs> No, no, nobody says that. Uh, but we know that though it's difficult and though it's hard, he's doing it, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 10 and 11, for our profit, so we'll be more holy partakers of his holiness. No chastening seems to be joyous. It's grievous. It hurts. It's a load to bear. But afterward, let me see if there's any fruit here in the valley. Let me see if there's some nuts over in the walnut grove. Afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who will learn, to those who are exercised thereby. Oh, what beautiful, beautiful truth. I got to hurry. Jesus said, I went down to my garden of nuts to see, to see, to see. I want to see if there's fruit I'm going to say there's fruit in the valley and to see whether the vine flourished. That's the grapevine. Probably an emblem of joy. Let me see if there's joy in my, in my garden. Flourished. That means it burst out. It is gloriously productive. And, and, and uh, let me see uh, the pomegranates. Oh, look over here. The pomegranates have budded. They have budded. They've just beginning. They haven't got fruit yet, but there's promise of fruit there. Let's see, he looks at the nuts. He looks at the grapevines. He looks at the pomegranates, probably uh, emblematic of all the fruit of the garden. But you know what I think he's looking at? Spiritual growth. The Lord comes to our fruit gardens and he's looking for spiritual growth. Where is it? It's in, uh, it's in 1 John. It's in 1 John chapter number 2. And the same Holy Ghost who wrote 1 John 2 is the same Holy Ghost who wrote these rather difficult verses in Song of Solomon chapter number 6. I write unto you, little children. This is John expressing the sentiment of the Holy Ghost because your sins are forgiven you. Listen to this. I write unto you, fathers, because you've known Him that's from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because you've overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father. Look what he did. He divided all Christians into fathers, young men, and little children. Three levels of spiritual growth. I think that's what we've got in our text. The nut grows, the grapevines, the uh, pomegranates. Uh, it looks like some of them have already flourishing. Some of them are just budding levels of spiritual growth. And I want to make an announcement right off because the, the, the bride, the Shulamite, has shown some signs of spiritual insensitivity, uh, of a spiritual lethargy, of spiritual immaturity. But he still loves her. He still, I'd say God loves the new converts as well as he loves the senior saints. Hallelujah. And amen. Listen, listen. I've written unto you fathers. You've known him from the beginning. I've written to you young men because you're strong and the word of God's in you. Boy, that's growth. And I write unto you, uh, uh, you've overcome the wicked one. Little children, young men, and fathers. I want him to come into my garden. I hope I get an amen here. Not just for Brother Bagwell, for you class member. And he sees some growth. He sees some progress. Not just buds. I see some blossoms, <laughs> full blooms, fruit, fruit is me. And, and over here, flourishing, flourishing. Our Savior, our Savior.
coming in to his garden. Now look, verse 12. Verse 12. Do I have a consensus? Uh, does everybody agree with me? I can only preach it after I pray as the Holy Ghost leads me, as the Holy Ghost guides me. Or ever I was aware. Now wait a minute, preacher. You can't apply that to Jesus. Or ever I was aware. I, I, I simply didn't, didn't know about. Oh, yes, I can. I know of one thing at least. I know, class, I know of one thing at least of which Jesus was not cognizant, was not aware. I'll just put it this way. He did not know when he walked the paths of this earth. One day near the end of his ministry, in fact, the disciples came and said, all right, Lord, when is the second coming? When will you be coming back to this earth again? We'd like to know. You've told about the Olivet Discord. Tell me, when are you coming? Mark 13, 32, listen class, of that day and that hour, the day and the hour of the second coming, knoweth no man, no man, no. Jesus said, not even the angels know the day and the hour, nor the Son, neither the Son. Nobody knows the exact hour of the second coming. The angels that are in heaven don't know. Neither the Son. That's the darling Son of God. Jesus said, I don't know. Only one knows the Father. Nobody knows that but the Father. So I can apply these words to Jesus. But if I do, it must be in the area, the context of the second coming. Watch. Oh, I'm excited. Watch. Or ever I was aware. He's in his garden. He's looking at his growing young ones. He's seeing spiritual growth. The church is going to be a, a church triumphant. The church still exists. The church is growing in the midst of a cruel and dark. And ever I was aware, zoom, zoom, out of, out of the blue, in an instant, my soul made me the soul of the Lord Jesus the desire of the Lord Jesus, the will, nephish, it can be uh, rendered these ways, that the innermost longings of the Lord Jesus made me like the chariots of Amenadab. The chariots of Amenadab. What in the world is that? It's the Father saying to the Son, the fruit's ready, the church is ripe, time has run its course, send the chariots. Let the, uh, let the voice of the archangel be heard. Let the trump of God sound. Uh, let the dead in Christ rise for, go get them, son. My soul in excitement made me like the chariots of a minute. Uh, chariots riding to glory. You said you can't picture the rapture. You can't picture riding to glory uh, like the chariots of a minute. Uh, how did Elijah leave this earth? Anybody remember the miracle God worked when all the life? Second Kings, I wrote it down. Second Kings 2.11 came to pass as Elijah and Elisha walked on and talked. There appeared a chariot of fire and there were horses of fire and parted both of them asunder and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Chariots of fire took him to glory. The chariots of Amenadab, who's riding in those chariots, the church, the bride, the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember uh, what Amenadab, N Nadab, that part, Nabid, me, a crowd of willing, generous, precious, excited children of God on their way to glory. It's going to happen one of these days. He'll be, he'll be looking over his church. He'll be praying for his church that they may be one, uh, that they'll be separate from the world, that they'll someday be with me. And the Father will say, well, I'll accept the chariots. Go and get them. Blow the horn. Sound the trumpet. And we'll be going in the moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Uh, oh my, uh, uh, come up hither, he said, and we will be absent from the body, literally, and present with the Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. My, my, my. This could be a veiled reference to the rapture itself with the Lord Jesus rejoicing. Listen to this. As a young man marries a virgin, Isaiah 62, 5. 
So, so will it be that the bridegroom Jesus will rejoice over the bride and God will rejoice 